Welcome to Film and Page. I'm Dominic, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the book The Murder of Minnie Kalan, a true Newfoundland crime story, published in 2018 and written by Tom Grucci and published by Flanker Press. So this book is a little bit different from the ones I usually talk about, because this is a true crime book, and I usually talk about science fiction and fantasy. But every now and then, I'd like to branch off and read some true crime. Uh, now, I've only reviewed one other true crime book on my channel, and that was actually an audio book. And I, that was last year, I think, or the year before I did a review in that one and put it up. So this book, I actually read this book back in 2020. And I found the book while I was on vacation in Newfoundland, uh, in Corner Brook to be exact. Uh, so whenever I go on vacation in like strange towns or cities, um, I always like to check out as many of the bookstores as I can, especially like used bookstores or bookstores that are more like local, just to see if they kind of have anything that's more local to them. And that's how I found this book was at one of the local bookstores in the mall, it popped out uh, because it was a true crime book. So I don't read a lot of true crime, but I do every now and then. And then it was a case that happened in a province that I grew up in. So that's another reason why I wanted to read it. So I don't read a lot of true crime just because of the simple fact that it's true. This, these stories are usually very disturbing and uh, it's hard to wrap your brain around why people would do the things that are usually presented in these books. So this is not something that Stephen King wrote or made up or uh, this isn't something that Frank Herbert wrote or anything like that. This is something that was actually happened and this was actual, an actual crime someone committed against usually, most times another person. Uh, so what is this book about? This book is about the murder of Minnie Kalan and the author Tom Grucci was actually the RCMP cop uh, that found her body. So this happened on March 13th, 1986. And uh, Tom Grucci, it was, he took the call to go out. There was a dist disturbance, someone had seen something. So he went out to see what was up. So he came to this spot on the road where as you came up on the highway, kind of there was an embankment and it kind of goes off into the ocean. So he went there and that, this is where he found the body of Minnie Kalan. And now Minnie Kalan was uh, 60 years old. She was a mother, she was a wife and a grandmother. So he found her body and she had been raped and murdered. And so that's what, uh, and then the whole investigation obviously kicks off from there. The rest of the RCMP and stuff get involved. Now there's two things about this story that make it disturbing. Uh, the first thing is, uh, well, right off the bat, obviously it's a rape and a murder. That right there makes it disturbing, but it happened in a small town in a community. Uh, now the community was called Norman's Cove. So this is a very small community where this kind of thing never happens. So it's always way more, it always seems to be more disturbing or something for people when it happens in these small communities, because in these small communities, you're supposed to be safe because usually they're tight knit, they're smaller. And a lot of the reason why people go to these small communities and away from the big cities is because of all the crime that happens in the big cities. Now I've actually lived in both. I've lived in a big city and I've lived in a small town and I know I've always felt more secure, safer in a small community. Because when I'm living in the big city, I can hear about on the news all the crimes that's happening within that city around me. Now, that has the effect of making you feel not as safe. But the other thing it does, it almost desensitizes you to the news of hearing about all this stuff going on because you hear about it so much. Where if you live in a small town where it never happens, and then you do hear about it, it seems to have a lot more impact. So that was the case with this. Not only that is... There is a bizarre twist to this case, and that is Minnie Kalan was not the intended victim of this person that wanted to commit this crime. This was a case of mistaken identity. So that's the other like disturbing twist to this story. So uh, this uh, RCMP officer, Tom Grucci, he finds this body of this woman, Minnie Kalan, that was uh, murdered and raped. And now the RCMP investigate, and it doesn't take them very long to find out who had did this, committed this act, because it was a very small community. So this book, this, so that's what this book is about. It, it's written by him and it goes over all the details of this case. 
Now it's uh, written in a way, it's a very short read. So, and it is a page turner, but it's very short. It's less than 200 pages. And the way it's written, it's very to the point. There is like no filler in this book. It's a very lean story. So I, I like that about the book. Uh, you can get it, you can get through it fairly quick. And just the setting makes it fascinating and just everything around it. It was a very fascinating case. And uh, so if you like true crime and stuff like that, I think this is a very good book to pick up. So now if you want to read this book or you you're interested by this point, now I'm going to talk spoilers. I'm going to get into spoiler territory. I'm going to talk about more details about the book. So this murder happens. The RCMP investigate. And as I said, it doesn't take them long to find the murderer. They find him uh, very quickly and he's at home in bed with his wife and he's loaded drunk. So they go, they pick him up, they bring him in. And the person who committed this crime was a guy called Die Butt. Now, I don't know if that's his real name because names and stuff has been changed in the book to protect people's identities. So Die Butt was arrested for this murder, which he denied. He said he didn't do it and he was proclaiming his innocence. Now, what's interesting about this part of the story is once they have him in custody is him and Tom Grucci start to form, I wouldn't say it's a friendship, but they start to get close. And it's, I guess it's, this was Tom Grucci's way of trying to get Guy Butt to drop his guard and confess to what he had done. And eventually in the book, it takes a while, but eventually it works. So he's, you know, they, they, he's very cordial with him, gets some smokes, gets some food, stuff like that, talks to him like he's just another guy. Kind of lulls him into a sense where he starts to, you know, Guy Butt starts to think of Tom as a friend. And then finally he drops his guard and he confesses the whole thing to Tom Grucci. So this is where we find out, and this is the part of the book where you find out that it was a case of mistaken identity. And uh, so what Guy Butt, Butt confessed was he had been drinking heavily that day and he went to a buddy's house that night where they continued to drink even more. And his buddy had a daughter. And his daughter, this, this daughter of the house, had a friend over. And Guy Butt was very attracted to this friend and zero, just like instantly became obsessed with her. She was 16 years old. And the way he describes her in the book, she was 16 years old, long red hair and very beautiful. And he, the more he drank, he said, the more he wanted her. So he was just obsessing about her more and more in his mind as he's over there drinking. So this community is very small. So a lot of people, they all know each other. Everyone knows each other here. So he knows this girl's parents, so he knows where she lives. So right there, he decides, he makes a conscious decision. I'm going to rape this girl. I want this girl. I'm going to rape her tonight. I know the route she takes to get home and I'm going to wait for her, hide, and I'm going to get her and I'm going to rape her. So he does this. He goes out and she has to walk along this road where you have this kind of like this embankment that leads out to the ocean. So this is where he's hiding there. So he sees, as he's hiding, he sees someone walking along a woman. He grabs her, pulls her in, and he's going to rape her. And then he realizes he's gotten the wrong person. It's actually Minnie Kalan. And this actually drives Guy Butt into a rage. He's absolutely furious over this. Because the girl didn't leave at the time he expected or she took some other route home, but she never passed that point. So he got so enraged that he raped Minnie Kalan and then he murdered her. And then he just went home, loaded drunk, and passed out in bed with his wife. Now, he had the intention of going back the next day and, you know, trying to hide the body out in the ocean, but he was too liquored up, couldn't do it that night, went home, fell asleep. That's where the RCMP picked him up. So a very disturbing case, and it's very odd that, I find it very weird that this guy who, you know, he was, had been, you know, he wasn't like young, but probably middle-aged, but for some reason, just something in his brain snapped that night and he had to do this. Like, it's hard to wrap my brain about what would push him to commit this act at that point in his life, why he just decided to do it then. Now, maybe there was, now, now maybe there was more cases, maybe he had done stuff like that in the past, but, it, you know, it wasn't murder, maybe he had committed sexual assault, maybe he had a reputation in the town of being a sleazebag, you don't know, right? So the, the book doesn't go into that much detail, but if that wasn't the case, I find it, like, disturbing that he would just, like, snap like that one day. So very, very disturbing case. And the other thing that makes this disturbing is when you hear about the sentence he had. So he was sentenced to 14 years for this. And I guess he was on good behavior because he was out in seven. So he served half his prison time. And then the other thing on top of this that was even more disturbing is his wife stayed with him. She never left this guy. On top of that, she would visit him in prison 
and they would have what they call conjugal visits. And he actually got his wife pregnant, believe it or not. And so once he was done his seven years, he came out, went back with his wife. They got back together and they moved to another province. So a very disturbing story. And it absolutely blows my mind that his wife took him back and actually had a kid for him. It's really, uh, it's just one of those things I cannot wrap my brain around. The other thing about these kind of books is, well, these ones in particular, ones that happen in provinces that I live in, I always find them very fascinating because you know the areas, you kind of know the history of the place. So it, for some reason, it's, I find it, I make, it makes it more of an interesting read. I'm sure other people, you know, wherever they live, feel the same way. There was uh, another crime that happened actually in the town that I grew up in, in Corner Brook, that hasn't been made into a book, but I, or maybe it has and I don't know about it, but pretty sure it hasn't. And it's one that I've read up about a bit just through um, articles online and stuff. And that was a girl. That, now, when I was growing up, I heard, this is how I heard this story, uh, is that this young girl was taken one night up to the mall. And she was taken behind the mall, behind where the Kmart was specifically, and stabbed to death with a screwdriver. That's how I always heard this story. Till I got older and I was able to find out the proper details of the story. And then finally, when I had access to the internet, I could really find out a lot of detail about the story. And it happened quite different. It uh, was this girl who worked at a gas station on the same parking lot as the mall that had the Kmart. And she was leaving that night. She had worked the evening shift and she was leaving to... Uh, bring the deposit, cash deposit, because this was the like early 80s this happened, late 70s, early 80s. And back in those days, you workers would have to take like a physical bag of cash home with them when they left to do the deposit at the bank either that day, either that night or in the morning. Uh, so this is what she was doing. So she had a friend that knew she worked there. So him and this other guy, uh, they went there and offered her a ride. And now she trusted him because this was a person she was friends with. She knew this guy. They went to high school together. And so she gets in the truck with them. And then they had plotted to take the money and rape her. So they take her out in the woods. They take the money. And so they rape her. And then the one guy kills her. Actually suffocates her in the snow. So then uh, they get caught and they get convicted. And the one guy served his full 25 years. And then he got out. And went to another province and this was the guy that was her friend from high school now he's some years ago since he got out but now he's dead now he's after passing away that's the last update i heard on the story now the one i think that actually committed the physical rape and murder uh he's still in jail and uh, now he's actually got linked to two other mur murders because uh, as when he got convicted dna technology wasn't a thing back then but as it got more advanced because of DNA, he was actually linked to two women that was raped and murdered in Ontario. So this wasn't a one-off for this guy. This was actually, this guy was actually, if you kill more than one person with a repeating pattern, this guy was actually a serial killer and he would have done it again. So this guy is still in jail. I don't think he's dead yet, but he is still in jail. So another very disturbing case. Now I gave like the quick version of it. There's more to it than that. But another case that I would like to see made into a book or so you can get all the details about it. Um, I'm surprised nobody has. So a very disturbing book. Um, so, but if you do like true crime, this is one to pick up. This is a good one. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section and I will see you at the next one. I'd like to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you all in helping this channel grow. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.